Hi guys, so I'm back um, with uh, the inking portion of this project. So uh, the ink that I decided to go with is Victorian Velvet and now I just have to ink all the edges to a million different papers. So we'll get started with that. I was going to film earlier and actually may be able to hear it in the background. Um, but there's the uh, the train, and it literally, excuse me, I was getting ready to go with this, and looked at my camera, and the train, it was such a heavy train that it was shaking my, um, my camera. So... So earlier I was working on this and got so tired I had to go take a nap. So let's see. Hopefully this won't be as boring as the last one. No guarantees. Um, so let's see. Um, hmm. Will, the hubby just got a new truck, so he's very excited about that. Um, oh, <laughs> as far as work stories, this one is kind of an interesting one. Usually, you know, it's pretty quiet or, you know, there's not a lot that happens at my job. Although, you know, educating adults is a lot of times a thankless job because they usually think they know everything coming into the program that we do. And um, this particular student was no exception to that role. He um, was a young man and joined the program. They seemed just, you know, kind of quiet and shy and all that. Well, in the program, we have to have, you know, specific documents in to our affiliated um, or to the facilities we have as, uh, affiliations with so that our students can go out and do clinical hours and do hands on training. And we have one particular facility that is a has a requirement of a two-step TB process, and you know it's the other two do not. But it wouldn't be fair to have you know if our class size is 20 students, you know to have a third of them or half of them. Be required to have a two-step process because of the facility that they're assigned to and you know the other students not have to do that because you know they're going to a different facility so just to be standardized every student is required to have TB test documentation of a two-step test or uh, something equal to that such as did I do this one? I think I did, yeah. Such as a uh, chest x-ray, uh, well, not a chest x-ray, a letter from a physician saying that they had a chest x-ray on a specific date and it shows uh, no signs of active tuberculosis. But chest x-rays can be very expensive. And then the other one would be a blood test uh, which is actually the technical term is a quantiform gold blood draw for tuberculosis. So we tell our students usually when they register, um, if they if they register at the school, I go over this information with them. If they register online, they get an email. But you would be surprised with how many people don't actually read these emails. So they're informed of that, and then on the first day, 
during general orientation. I always speak with the class and tell them that, you know, this is when you need to have documents in by, this is when you need to, you know, do this or whatever. And then, <clears throat> excuse me, it's also written up on the board and, you know, they're adults, so they're responsible to make sure that it's been provided, you know, this, that, and the other. So first day I do that, and then every day of the first week, stand up front and I say, if anyone has any tuberculosis testing documentation or if they're providing their own background check or, you know, whatever documents, you know, CPR and that kind of stuff, all of that stuff, you know, we require. So for the first week, every day, I stand up at the front and I say, okay, if you have any documents, please bring it up now and I will go make copies and I will deliver your originals back to you. And everyone is happy. Not really. Then, because the TB test, if they're doing a two-step documentation, or two-step process, not documentation, but a two-step TB test, it takes um, about three weeks to do. So when you're doing a two-step TB test, I'll just give you guys a little bit of background. It's actually quite boring, but why not? I'm just inking, so what else am I going to talk about? So a two-step TB test is you have the tuberculosis test administered. Within 48 to 72 hours, you go back and you have another step administered. Or, I'm sorry, you go back and have it read. Sorry about the train, you guys. It's going to be really loud. So I'll just keep inking and pause for a second. It's been so warm here. I just have my craft room window open. So that's why it's cold. It's been really loud. Um, it's been warm here today, probably, I would say today. Um, it's not been really warm. I mean, it's been warm for us. But living in the Pacific. Northwest. Oh Lord. A little louder. Um, but living in the Pacific Northwest, most places don't have air conditioning. We have a little portable unit in the living room. Um, and it, cle it, it cools most of the house, but my craft room usually is a little bit warmer because I have to have all the lights on for crafting and videoing and that kind of stuff. So it does get a little warm. So anyway, back to the story. So the two steps. So you go in, you have it administered. And then within 48 to 72 hours, uh, they go back, they look at your arm and they mark down the reading. And then within two, or well, usually it's about 14, to 21 days, so two to three weeks, you make an appointment to have the second step administered. Once it's been administered, you have to go back and have it read within, again, that 48 to 72 hours. Now, they do that so there isn't a false negative. You can always get a false positive, but they just want to make sure that you didn't get a false negative. I'm not sure why, but anyway. So that's the process that they go, and we offer all of our students the ability to do that with us uh, because our nurses have been trained to administer tuberculosis testing and also um, my boss has been um, granted the ability to, pass, or to purchase the TB testing serum. So we can do that. So on the first day, we also have signups for those. And I remind everybody about that and this, that, and the other thing. Well, then after the first week, after I have um, stopped standing up in front of the class every at the beginning and saying, does anyone have any, you know, paperwork or whatever it is? And I just broke my nail. Shoot. That sucks. I guess that'll teach me. Um, I write it on, it's, it's written on the board that you need to have your documentation in 
by no later than X date. Okay. You know, otherwise I can't scan it and send it to the facility on time. And now we have three facilities. One of them is um, very particular about the way documents are submitted and the time frame in which they're submitted. And, you know, they get upset if it's not done correctly. So you don't have to be aware of that. So without fail, every session, there is one student who doesn't get their documentation in on time or I didn't understand what you meant by that and I'm very clear about it and the way I just explained it to you guys is the way that I explain it to them. I try and be as simple about it as possible and just you know very clear and I always let them know if you have additional questions or you know something about that you didn't understand please come ask me you know come talk to any of your instructors blah 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 nothing 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 the whole time so the day before so there the students are with us for 12 days uh, in class and then, you know, there are, you know, s lectures, demonstrations, uh, skill practice, the whole nine yards. And that happens over a three-week period, 12 days in the class. Once that happens, they go out into the facility setting and they do five, eight-hour days out there doing their uh, clinical labs. So, the day before, I usually try and wait for as long as humanly possible to put that in just to allow students who are doing their own tuberculosis testing just a little bit more time to get that done and into me. So the day before they, the, or the last day of class is the day that I always set for them to have their paperwork in by. So that day comes and there's one student who I don't have their document, just one. Usually there's just one in every class, but just one. So then, of course, I have to ask about it. And now, mind you, this particular student had had um, some issues they had been sick one day and we had you know so they they hadn't attended one day so we had talked about them attending and then uh, they were their job was being very fickle about certain things and they were going to not come in one day and I said well if you don't come in this day then or if you have to leave early then you know you can't go to clinical because we have to make sure that there is a very specific amount of hours that they've attended prior to being able to go out to clinical and if they missed more than just that one day of class they that you know policy is that clinical is canceled and they return to the next session as space allows uh, for the clinical part because sometimes we have large classes and they're only, you know, our instructors are only allowed to have so many uh, students with them at any given time. So, they weren't very happy about this. And then, um, so it's this particular student that I have to talk to now about it. So, I pull this student into the office just very nicely um, to talk to them about the TV testing. And, you know, I explained to them I don't have it. Uh, if I don't have it, you can't go to clinical. And they start getting irate. Like, but just very, not like, I'm trying to, like they, not angry. I'm just trying to explain it. Knowing what I know now, and, you know, none of it's been confirmed, obviously, because we can't ask them, you know, are you mentally unstable? Are you taking medications that, you know, because you're crazy or whatever, that kind of stuff. But knowing what I know now and judging by, you know, and just experience in the past and 
having worked with um, some you know, um, not students, but just, I was a nanny and, you know, working with some special needs students in the past. Um, this particular person, I would really think that they have a touch of Asperger's and they seem to be bipolar, um, just in the way that they reacted to it. And then, um, and I'll explain in just a little bit, like their reaction, but uh, that's just kind of my take on things. Now, I'm obviously not a medical doctor, but, you know, you, there are some signs and symptoms that are very much pointing in that particular direction. So, um, they came up and they basically didn't allow me to talk kind of thing. Uh, they were like, well, you know, it's all said and done now. So what can we do to fix it? And I would, you know, I was trying to just clarify the situation and just ask, you know, why they hadn't said anything until this time when they knew that they weren't going to be able to make the deadline. And that just agitated this particular student, um, even more. So they, um, also, while this was going on, you know, not making eye contact, not looking actually at me while I'm trying to discuss this, uh, they, you know, closed their eyes as if, you know, they closed their eyes, I would stop talking and just go away and they wouldn't have to deal with it. So that's one of those just kind of odd reactions, especially for an adult. And so that happened and... I said, well, you know what, at this point, um, there's not a decision being made about your clinical if we're going to allow you to submit, excuse me, paperwork and so on and so forth. And I was feeling, I know it's weird, but I was feeling a little bit bad. I'm kind of a softy for the most part when it comes to stuff like this. And so I was thinking that I would speak with Pat and, you know, talk about it. And she actually, when we did speak and, you know, she left it up to me if I was willing to, you know, come in and, you know, pick up the paperwork from the school, get it scanned in and sent in, you know, separate. And, you know, I was thinking that that's what I was going to do because, I don't want anyone to have to wait to finish their schooling so they can go to, you know, get to work and, you know, start making their money because, you know, a lot of people work, you know, go through the class so that they can, you know, start work and they can, you know, make a living and that kind of stuff. So I didn't want that to happen. So then our other instructor who is there on lab days, Pat wasn't in the building, um, but uh, our other instructor, Caroline, was. So Caroline came back, at, um, between, so between classes, Caroline had left and we hadn't gotten a chance to chat because she had to go run some errands during the break between the morning and the evening class. And so she comes back and we start talking about it. And apparently this particular student had she had asked them to do um, a demonstration of a skill like the week before, you know, as they were practicing and they can, you know, they really didn't know how to do it. So that following week when they were practicing again, she had once again requested that, you know, they demonstrate it and give reasoning behind why it was like that. And they had basically told her no no, I'm not going to do that, and closed their eyes again, you know, kind of like they did with me, thinking, oh, well, if I close my eyes, she'll just go away, kind of thing, and that just set me off. It's one thing for me, it's one thing if they're, 
you know, not nice to me or whatnot, but if they're not nice to, you know, Caroline or uh, Pat, that just gets me fired up. So I decided um, that Caroline and I were going to call Pat right then and there because we still had time before class was starting and we were both going to talk to Pat and I had already decided that my mind was changed and I was not willing to um, accept paperwork late and also, you know, not come in to get it, scan it and send it in. And then I would also have to tell the facility that I had uh, made a mistake and not scanned it with the original. And I just decided with that behavior that I was not going to do that. I was not willing to do that because I was heated. And Caroline was actually upset with the way that the student had talked to me. Uh, about the paperwork so and it was so cute I was telling my hubby the story and he said I would have knocked him out basically for talking to you like that like he never swore he was just disrespectful you know he didn't say anything bad didn't call any names he just was just disrespectful about the way that he was talking about everything I don't know it was just ridiculous so then we called Pat and Pat, you know, uh, full, fully supports, you know, the decisions that we make if she's not in the building, you know, obviously, cause she, you know, trusts us to be her support staff and, you know, make sh sure things go smoothly when she is not in the building. So we did that. And so then I had to tell the student that I'm not going to continue on to clinical and that Pat wanted a meeting with them like in a couple weeks when she was going to be back and she was the so that was the end of the class so then between the next class starting and um, the end of, so between the end of the class and the next class starting um, Pat wasn't going to be in the office because it's open registration and she doesn't need to be there for open registration days. So, uh, so I set up an appointment with this particular student and they seemed okay with it that clinical being canceled. They were actually very polite at that time and, you know, n totally not like the incident earlier in the day where, you know, they were like, well, my dad trains this and I'm paying you for a service and, you know, basically it's, not, you know, none of your business, like why I didn't have the paperwork in just, you know, it's not in. So now what do we do? And, um, it just reminded me of something. I was trying to explain to them that, you know, there was a procedure that we had to follow with our facilities. That's what, you know, the, and, you know, what they expect from us. And they said, you can't call it, uh, the student said, you can't call it your facility. They're not your facilities kind of thing. Uh, and I was like, wow, they're not, huh? Um, so the affiliation we have with them means nothing. I didn't say that out loud, but I wanted to. It's kind of irritating. So then, anyway, so they were fine with it. And, you know, not being able to go do their clinical hours, they were okay. And everything kind of went smoothly and then it, during from the time that the class the classroom part ended and the clinical began we reached out to several of the people that um, this student had been partnered with in class just to kind of touch base and check behavior because if they acted pretty irrational when I was speaking to them about the TB testing, you know, kind of wanted to make sure we, the, as the instructors, they didn't observe anything or hear anything inappropriate, but, you know, we're not holding their hands every second of every step of the, the classroom part. So, um, so we got feedback from them. So we just, uh, for the next like week and a half, Pat was preparing for the meeting and, um, the original meeting time got moved back because it didn't they this student got a different job and they were training during that time so set up a different meeting time with Pat and anyway fast forward to the meeting uh, the meeting lasted all of 
I would say three minutes. Yeah. And in that time, it started out really good, you know, um, Pat was very encouraging about some stuff and then um, brought up a couple of the concerns that his partners had uh, while working with him and immediately it was like a light switch was flipped. He um, would not, you know, um, she brought that up and, you know, you could tell he was visibly agitated by that. And then, you know, she brought up the way that um, he responded to me about the TB testing. And he literally wouldn't look at me. And he was like, I'm sorry. You know, I'm, you know, uh, what it was it? It was, I'm, I'm sorry. Or something like that. But it was, it was, it was weird because it wasn't an apology to me because they weren't, you know, he wasn't looking at me or anything like that. Um, it was, I don't, I don't know. It was just the weirdest thing. So, um, and then Pat was, what did she say? She said something about the way that, you know, you're behaving. We just have to make sure that you are, you know, our students are well, um, and that kind of stuff. And then he, then she said something about, you know, possibly, you know, being able to continue with the July class. And he said, well, at this point, it's going to be a no for me, but I'm going to think about it. So, and then he basically just got up and left. So Pat and I were talking about it and, you know, kind of like, oh, like we'll never see you know, basically doubt we would ever see him again. And then, you know, when you just have like these weird feelings, it's kind of that awkward where you're like, you know, you'll joke about something. I really think that this student, and I'm glad that, you know, no longer in the class, but I really think that they have some mental instabilities, obviously. Um, very, uh, I think a little bit of Asperger's and maybe some bipolar disorder, but again, I'm not a medical doctor, but also the impulse control that this student had was very little. So I kind of think he's a little bit of a psychopath. And the reason I kind of can feel like I can say that is because not, so this meeting happened on Tuesday. Yeah, it happened on Tuesday and we kind of, you know, Pat and I were talking about it and we kind of laughed it off and it happened so fast. Um, our, the other instructor, Caroline, was like, I didn't even know really that it was, it happened and it was over. And so, you know, we kind of laughed it off and, you know, like probably won't hear from him again. So then, just making sure I've got that inked, on Thursday when we were leaving the school, Pat and I are pulling out of the um, the parking lot, and so we'll just say the parking lot is here, and we park like right here. Well, there's the entrance here, and there's a little half wall, and then there's the rest of the build. Like our building is kind of L-shaped, like this. So there's a wall right here, a little half brick wall, and then so we pull out and we take a left out, you know, into the alley. And right here, like, he is standing, leaning up against the wall in all black, just standing there, kind of on his phone, nonchalantly standing there. And both Pat and I are like, whoa. So we pull out, and it was kind of like, what do we do? So we pulled out, got to the light, and then Pat's like, we should go back. I go, yeah, but I needed to go to the store. So I said, how about we run to the Safeway real quick and I'll grab my groceries. And then after that, we'll go back and see if he's still there. And we went back and he wasn't there. And he hasn't been back since. Excuse me. But I don't know. It was creepy. It was just very, very creepy to me uh, that he was just standing there. So... 
yeah so that was the excitement so that long drawn out story <laughs> that was all the funness from that particular story so crazy crazy student so now my next thing is going to be adhering all this paper down so trying to think let's do this kind of assembly line so I'll get all of my move this out of the way this over to the side that over so we'll get or try and get all of these ready and we'll kind of stick them down one at a time so now that that exciting story is over what else to talk about right um, We haven't been, we used to play darts actually. My husband and I, we met playing darts years ago. And actually now that I think about it, on Wednesday, we are actually going to have our nine year anniversary. So we've been together nine years on Wednesday. Our wedding anniversary, however, is not until September and we've only, it'll be our, um, two-year wedding anniversary in September but um, anyway the whole point of that was so we met it's really silly while playing darts you know it seems like such an odd thing yes they have dart leagues and all that kind of stuff some of you guys may know that some of you guys may not but we met while playing darts and we I think about a year and a half ago now um, actually yeah about a year and a half ago now we decided we were going to kind of step back a little bit and not you know play league and we weren't going to go out and you know that kind of stuff and it has been pretty awesome I was getting burnt out from it but you know, recently we've decided, hey, you know, it's been a while. Why not? You know, we'll go out and, you know, see some of our old friends and, you know, play a tournament or two. And I have to say, I still don't miss it. But, you know, whatever. It is what it is. So, I've noticed, though, you know, I, I'm not a drinker. I'm usually the driver <laughs> but what I've noticed is every time we go out the next morning even though I haven't been drinking it's like I have a hangover and it is horrible like it's just terrible you know I could understand if you know I'd gone out and tied one on and you know that's so cute. I love that. Um, you know, I could totally understand that. That would make a lot of sense. But if I haven't even had one drink, and I wake up the next morning, and I'm feeling like I'm hung over, and it's just a terrible thing, that's so not fair. Like, if I'm going to um, have the hangover, I, might not, I should at least have had the fun from the night before right so anyway we went out um because the hubs wanted to um see his cousin and um so we went out and they actually played the tournament together and i just was spectating last night and um I woke up today and i was just not feeling that good Again, and now that I think about it, though, I really think that I just, I've been dehydrated. I honestly think that it's just dehydration. And it just coincides with um, 
especially because uh, we've been, uh, what do you call it? Like, you know, just being out and not really hydrating like I should. And it, I think it's just coincidence because, uh, you know, when we go out, we're out later than normal. And so I'm not thinking about keeping my fluid intake up and then I just get dehydrated. <laughs> so that's my thought on that. So I don't know. But back to that, yeah. So, you know, we've been going out a little bit. It's kind of fun. I still could just love to be at home and, and craft. That's kind of, I'm so much more of a homebody now than ever before. But, yeah. So we don't really have any plans for our anniversary. I don't know about you guys, like after you got married, like for my married subbies, after you got married, do you guys still do your, I guess not, I guess dating anniversary or, you know, when you guys met anniversary, I don't know, do you guys still do stuff for those? I guess I kind of feel like for me, because this year it'll be nine years and we've only, you know, we've only been married for two, you know, and if you tell someone, oh yeah, they're like, when did you get married? And you go, I, you know, we've been married two years. They're like, oh, you're still in your new relationship. I'm like, oh no, honey. <laughs> been with this man for nine years. I've been knowing him for, I think, 12 or 13 <laughs> before we start, you know, before we got together. So I don't know. <laughs> I just always feel like I have to clarify with people. I'm like, oh yeah. So we've been together for, you know, nine years or whatever. You know, we've been married for two, but, you know, we've been together for nine. I don't know. I guess I shouldn't feel that way because who cares what they think, but apparently I do a little bit. And then that pocket is just a tad bit smaller, apparently. So let's go ahead and fix that and people will only know because, oh that's good, my other little piece fell on the ground. Now it's got some fuzz on it. Anyway, um, I guess it's no one's business. And thinking about it now I'm like, and if they're going to be judgy like that, why am I even going to be friends with them? Because that's ridiculous to be friends with judgy people like that. Yeah. So, so apparently there's that. I don't know. I was just thinking about it. So, yeah. I am, whoopsies, I think I was saying in my last video, in the middle of my 1500 sub away, sub, sub away, subby giveaway, and I feel like it's going really, really good, um, lots of entries, and just like the outpouring, you know, of support has just been amazing, it's just been awesome, so that makes me happy. something about this pocket that I apparently is kind of wonky. There we go. All right. That's one. Okay. All right. What is going on? I saw that now. Apparently this one has to get cut down just a tad too. And I 
just realized that I didn't re-ink that one edge that I had snipped off. Good thing it's black cardstock, so I can ink it, and no one will even know. Well, except you guys who are watching. I think I've said that a few times now. Sorry if my head's getting in the way, guys. I can't actually see it when um, uh, when I'm looking down and <sighs> filming because my screen is up there. Um, let's see what else. So for my birthday, my awesome hubby bought me a new camera and I think I mentioned it in one of my other videos and um, been filming on that and I really really love it. I'm just struggling a little bit with getting the right lighting so just bear with me. I'm trying guys but it's not easy. I think I'm just going to have to buy more lights because I've tried to edit it in Movie Maker and I, th I had to redo this one video, not this one, but um, I think it was, oh, my planner video. I had to resave it like three times because I turned up the, um, what do you call it? I turned up the, the brightness too far and everything was blown out and just orangey and terrible so then I had to redo it and it's weird because in here in my viewfinder everything looks fine like it's not too dark and then when I go to view the video on my computer it's super super dark and then when I try to get the proper lighting um, through Movie Maker, it still looks really dark, so it doesn't give me an accurate picture of what it's going to be. Maybe the settings on my monitor are all wonky, but it's kind of annoying. So, I'll have to work on that. Okay. This one... Goes right here. Oh, the back of this paper is so beautiful. It's so hard choosing what papers to use. That's a bummer. Such a bummer. I just thought of something. I totally just no. Stop it. I had it all set up the way it should and then I saw the other pattern and I was like, oh, maybe I did it wrong. No, I did not do it wrong. It's fine. So yeah. Yeah, not sure if we're gonna do anything. We might do dinner, but I work late that night. And he's got to work early the next morning. That's kind of the bummer. He works a 6 to 2 shift. And I work a 9 to 9. <laughs> so it's, you know, weekday stuff is really hard. And the reason I keep flipping this is because if you look closely at this paper, and I don't know if it will show you, but there's words on it and the words actually obviously if you put them one way it's you know upside down and I know most people won't look that closely at the paper I don't even know if I would notice it but if I wasn't the one putting it down um, but yeah I just happen to notice it so now of course it's got to go right side up Early. 
earlier as I was waiting, or not waiting, but um, before I started filming again, I was like, oh, maybe I'll work on the layouts of these pages. <laughs> I was just drawing such a blank. My brain, I just didn't have any creativity for these, which I'm sh I'll probably get once the paper gets stuck down. So I gotta get these done. And then I have a um, another quarterly card exchange. I know after the last one, I whined and complained and said, I'm never doing that again because too many people, you know, don't do it. And it made me upset and, you know, this and that. And then when the Evite comes out, I just can't resist. I just can't. Plus, I have a bunch of new stamps to use and I'm very excited about them. So, and I've been watching a lot of techniques that I want to try out. There we go. How stinking cute is that? So, so, I said yes to the quarterly exchange again, even though I think for like four years now, I'm like, I'm not doing it anymore. I can't. <laughs> I know. But this one is not fitting right. Um, so, yeah. So I gotta start doing that. But it's late July, so I have some time to do this. So I'm trying to get this done in a timely manner. It's not like I haven't known about it for a long time. I just have had other things obviously going on. But don't we all? So I'm trying to get this done and then I can get those card exchanges done. And then hopefully, hopefully, I will be able to get um, some of those other projects that I've been wanting to do for many, many moons in the works. Um, there are a couple mini albums I want to do. One of them specifically is kind of the tutorial to a mini album that I've done uh, using the Prima's, um, oh my goodness, um, Fairy, uh, Fairy Rhyme. Yeah, Fairy Rhyme because Fairy Bell came out before and I used uh, Fairy Rhymes and it's a uh, a horizontal paper bag mini album that I did with uh, the Tim Holtz binding rings and I've had a lot not a lot I guess I've had a number of requests for people wanting me to do you know a tutorial on a mini or something like that so I don't know exactly how I would do a supply list but what I was gonna do is I was gonna try and do the same basic layout of it you know, of what I did in that one. Now, I don't even know. I've had people also ask me what's my thought process be behind, you know, how I do my embellishing. And it's really, does it look good? Yes. Okay. Then I'm going to do that kind of thing. So, um, so yeah. <laughs> so I really don't know how to, um, you know, do... A video like that so it's just you know whatever all right let's see what else is new nothing seriously nothing I think I said that in the last video and then I thought all these things to talk about for this video I think another train is coming. So that's going to be fun. Earlier tonight when I was working in here, two little monsters ran in, wanted some attention, so I was giving it to them and then they were acting like they wanted me to come out and show me something. So I went out and in 
Oh no, please, please, please. Let me do that. Okay. I was like, let me at least get through that. Um, they wanted to show me that they were so proud. I want to make sure that this is done. This has to go like that because otherwise it'll be upside down. Anyway, they were so proud that one of them had unstuffed their bed. So there was, that's, I don't know if the paper's crooked or if just my cut was crooked. Anyway, easy enough to fix. Um, so then I had to gather up all of the stuffing and stuff it back. So now I have to sew it closed. They have so many beds, you guys. It's actually kind of embarrassing how many beds my dogs have. And they really don't use them except to unstuff them. So, yeah. Go figure. Um... An exact count of beds is six. Yeah. I don't know. Don't ask me. I don't know why two little dogs who never use their own beds, they just like the big bed to sleep in. I don't know why they have six beds. <laughs> Actually, I do because I thought, hey, okay, they need beds in... Here comes the train. It's going to get really loud. That is at least an Amtrak. So it'll, it's a quick one. I guess it didn't get too loud. I thought it was. Sounded like it when it was coming here. But, um, yeah. So, two little dogs. Some people were like, do they really need six beds? And it didn't start out that they were going to be bed collectors. <laughs> First, I was like, oh, you know, they need beds for, you know, the living room area. So then, got them those. And then there were two beds. Well, Truly already had, I think, a couple of beds. So then we had to get, you know, beds for Blakey. So he got oh, this one is too big also. Just a tad, tad too big. So he got bed. So then they had beds for the living room. And then of course, you know they need beds for in here when they come visit me in here which is they visit but they don't usually stay truly will dig around in her bed a little bit every now and then and maybe crash for just a little bit of time but um, she usually doesn't stay and then uh, after we got Blake the, we um, got that pen so they were staying in the pen so we decided that they needed um, some beds for specifically for that so they would you know stay in the pen and you know we didn't have to go grab them from the craft room or the living room or anything like that plus they were a really good deal at Christmas time uh, normally the beds that the, the beds that I had uh, purchased at Christmas time were on sale for ten dollars and normally they were like I think almost 25 so it was a great deal so they got those. Okay. So far, so good. Oh, all right. Let's change our ATG roll. Let's see if I can do this one this time. Probably not because 
y'all know I have an epic struggle. Okay. Oh Lord, this is going to be a really long video. So I'm actually going to stop it here, change it off camera, and I will be back with the rest of the paper um, adhering. So I'll see you guys in a bit. Thanks for watching. Bye.